Hello all, and welcome to Sanctuary Sunday. Sanctuary! Yes, the day where I try to cover something other than war games. Today, I'm covering Banish the Snakes. Now, why am I doing Banish the Snakes? Well, Banish the Snakes is primarily a game about uh, Christianity or expanding religion in Ireland uh, against the pagans or converting pagans to uh, to religion. Uh, so what better topic on a Sunday? And today is a special Sunday. It is Mother's Day. So hope you all are enjoying your Mother's Day. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to have your mother nearby, uh, you know, tell her you love her and uh, have a good day in that regards. And if you got a little bit of time, as you, if you're watching this, you apparently do, Enjoy me discussing Banish the Snakes. Now, I did an unboxing earlier and a little bit of an overview, not much, more of an unboxing, and I'll put a link to that in my description. This right here is going to be an after-action report, as what I typically do with my after-action reports, I'm going to talk a little bit about gameplay. So don't think that you can learn how to play this game based on my description. Please, please consider or con consult your rulebook and and go uh, proceed accordingly. Now there are some other playthrough videos. Go check those out. Uh, I think ID Jester's done it and some others. And so uh, go check those out if you really want the real way to play it. You know, I probably messed up on my plays. Now this, I just got done playing a, a solitaire uh, wall, uh, game. And so that's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, basically my experience with the solitaire and the gameplay. Uh, but um, this can be played with... Um, you know, multiple people, uh, and, and you're each taking on a different, uh, role of a saint and trying to, you know, again, convert, uh, the pagans in Ireland to, uh, to Christianity or to religion. So, um, the, uh, uh, as I said, you know, I, this is, I just got done finishing this and finally won. Uh, this is a little bit of a tough game. I've played it with people and solo before, uh, and this was the first time I won. So that's so. Let's talk about it. I was waiting until I won so I can talk about it. Right. So here we go. Here is the final board state of the game, uh, and it was a victory where uh, I did it the hard way. I did it by uh, converting all the uh, pagans over to Christianity. And if you look here, uh, uh, each of the people, there's basically. Uh, there are people, there are chiefs, there are kings, and then there's a high king. Uh, and then there are um, druids. Uh, and so no druids on the board right now because you kind of have to eliminate the druids to be able to get at other stuff. So those are the different type of uh, pieces you encounter. But uh, the ones that you're really focusing on trying to win is getting to the people. But you kind of have to go through some layers to get to the people and to convert them over. So that is a, um, that's a pagan. And then that is them converted over to uh, Christianity. And once you get all the people converted over onto this side, then you win the game immediately. So, uh, so I was able to do that. Uh, I lost a couple of priests. I actually started off with uh, Patrick. This is uh, St. Patrick, right? Uh, start off with St. Patrick and, uh, Auxilius and uh, both of those uh, took uh, uh, demised death, uh, and I don't know if that's their actual death or if they're just talking about it over time. But but they're gone, and what you do is when they die, they get a grave marker. But uh, all's not lost; they do get a bonus on there, and you can actually try to convert these uh, into a relic and then carry it around with you to get an automatic bonus wherever you go. Like if there's a grave marker, it stays in the area, but if you take it as a relic, you take it wherever you go. But the relics go anywhere from, this is a good one, it's plus two. They go from zero to plus three. So you could get a dud, and or you could get a good one and carry that around with you as a relic. Um, so uh, so start off with those two, and those uh, went the way of the dodo, but that's not uncommon. That That's going to happen over time. And when that happens, you hopefully have another uh, uh, saint in tow. Uh, you're going to get it out of the event cards. And hopefully, and there's a place where you can, uh, well, I'm going to use one that's not on the board here. But there's a place where you can keep keepers on here. Uh, and you just tuck them underneath there. And so then one of, when one of your saints goes, you take it out and you put it up here and you, you know, start anew, right? 
Uh, you have zeal, which is basically the hit points of the uh, saints. So when zeal gets down to the end here, you see that grave marker. That's when you pull out a grave and put that where they uh, where they expired. Uh, the zeal also determines the action points. If you see here, you start with four, 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 then three. When, when you're long as you're in these four spaces, you're going to have four action points. But as soon as you get down here, you have less action points. Action point is the whole key to the game here because that's what you're doing on your turn. This is predominantly a solitaire game, or a, a, and or if you want to add more people, it's a cooperative game. Um, and so you're all taking actions to change the board state. Um, some of the actions and the actions you can take are on this little player card here. You can prepare or evangelize. And so you can do that. You, it takes an action to do that, but that, that's going to give you a plus one. It's like storing up a plus one to take on a conversion attempt. And you can, and you, you have this little conversion attempt slider here. So when it comes time to actually, uh, do a conversion, you'll start, you know, like let's say you're at a negative five and then let's say you, you did two actions for evangelize. Well, then this will go down to negative three. And this tells you right here what die you need to roll, right? That you're going to need to roll over that. If you roll that, the conversion doesn't work. If you roll under that, then you're going to lose a zeal point. And again, the more zeal points you lose, the more action points you lose, and then you eventually can die uh, or leave the game. If you roll over that, then uh, you're, you're, you get a, com a successful conversion and you start flipping these little bad boys, and literally they are bad boys, uh, over to uh, to their uh, good side right there. Uh, so that this is a little marker so you can keep track of what your final roll it needs to be. If you get it all the way down to here, it's an automatic success, okay? So... Um, so that's one action that you're going to be doing is, is going to be preparing to evangelize, which basically storing up bonus points. You can also do a convert attempt. You know, there's there's versus druids versus leaders, kings, uh, chief, uh, between leaders, which are chiefs, kings, and high king, and then versus the people. Now, one of the things about conversion is uh, you've got to kind of get rid of the druid first, because as long as a druid is on the board uh, or in that area, you, 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 you can't really do much there. And so uh, the druids start off concealed. And so you have to try to do it. You have to pick your evangelize first, how many times you're going to do that, then do a conversion attempt. And when you do that, you get to flip it over and see that's a negative three. So that's going to be a little negative three on your slider. If you did a couple of conversions, then you're going to be down to a negative one. And then that, that means you just have to roll over a one. You just have to roll over the cloverleaf. If you roll the cloverleaf, nothing happens. Uh, you can't roll under the cloverleaf because that's a one. But if you roll over it, then you get to be able to remove this guy from the board. He comes off the board. Now, is he off the board forever? No. Uh, there's a chance for these guys to come back. And so what you're going to want to do is uh, in th the druids go in these spaces here where it says druid slash church. And so if you remove a druid and you, um, uh, and you have any action points left over, you might want to use the build action. Build is build a new church. So you build that in an empty druid location. And so, and you kind of want to do that. You want to leave some action points left over because uh, if, you, if you don't, then a druid can pop back up there. There's a lot of event cards, and we'll talk a little bit about those, but there's a lot of event cards that, that might pre-populate a druid back, and then you've lost everything that you've tried to accomplish. Then you, you draw randomly from the druid pile, and you get a, another concealed druid, and then you got to go through the, all the steps over again. So, you know, you want to kind of block that with a level one church. You can also, you know, now, on the, not on the same turn, but on a separate turn or by a separate uh, saint, you can use another build action and then make it a level one church. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, number one, it keeps blocking that space from druids. But number two, it gives you a number one. <laughs> it gives you a plus one uh, for any bonuses on your conversion attempt. So this is a plus one. Uh, this right here is a plus two church. So it, it you know you you take you converted you uh, upgrade a, a plus a level one church or or a plus one church to a level two church uh, to get up you know to get plus two, and you can eventually get to kind of the cathedral, which is a plus three. I didn't do that in my game, uh, but um, you could get to that point of uh, of getting that. Uh, so, and that that will give you a lot of bonus modifiers. Now, another thing you need to know about churches is that, that you're you have a limited supply of counters. Uh, there's like eight of the uh, the the first levels. Uh, then there's like uh, four, I think of of uh, no, there's uh, six of these, I think, and then four of those, and one of the big church. 
So you're limited. Now that came into play in my game because I eliminated a um, uh, a druid up here, but right up here where I had my, where my my two final uh, where my two saints finalized the uh, deal. They actually did the last conversion up there. But all I had was a disc on there because I had ran out of these these level one cubes. They were all gone. So what I had to end up doing is I had to go send one of my saints down to one of the cubes, upgrade it to a level two, so that would free up uh, um, a level one cube to put in there. So because I needed that not only to block out a druid, but I also needed to. Um, I needed the bonus. I needed the modifiers based on what was going on in that space. So that's that's your conversion attempts. Uh, well, as I said, conversion attempts, you want to knock out the Druid first. And then once you knock out the Druid, then you can have access to taking on some of these other things. And there's kind of a hierarchy of who modifies who. The High King, whatever their number is, and again, these kings are going to have a, a, number, a negative number on that. Everybody's got a negative number. And that's going to, but they, they, they bury, uh, like six is the worst and that you don't want to face a six because then you're having to do a lot of evangelizing to try it or building a lot of churches to try to st uh, store up to take them out in a conversion attempt. But so like, so like the high king is over here. Oops, sorry, I didn't need to bump that. So the high king's over there. And so the high king can, can affect, you know, the other kings that are underneath them. Uh, the kings can affect uh, the chiefs that are in their area. So you got two chiefs in this area. So this this uh, king will uh, affect those two, you know, lend its modifier to it. So so let's say this one right here was a negative three, and this is a negative two, you're at negative five. So on that little slide rule there, you're gonna start off at negative five, and then you gotta do some evangelizing or have some other bonuses to try to knock that down to try to get a better a chance to roll over this. That's really the heart of the game. It's the conversion attempts is all, mitigating your rolls to get to a, a more favorable roll of the dice or more favorable odds to do your conversion attempts. And then uh, and then the chiefs modify the people. So the, the chiefs of this, like this chief of this area, he's going to be on every roll of these guys. And of course, the people have modifiers too. They have negative modifiers. So everything's a negative. All the pagans are negative. And so you need to uh, kind of build up your your evangelizing, your modifiers to try to take out those uh to convert those uh divert the people because that's the name of the game is to convert everybody that's the 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 instant win and it's also the toughest win of the game you could go to the end uh, there's uh to the end of the game which right here it says game ends this is basically the paganism track in uh in the aisles right so uh starts off scotland falls to pagans first then uh stock uh what is that sticker lock and then england i messed up that one um, and then England turns there and then, then it's a matter of getting to the end of the game here. And then once the game ends, then it's a matter of adding up points and you get certain points for certain things of what you've got converted, what you left unconverted and stuff like that. Uh, but the sure way to win is, is do this. Um, now, uh, the, uh, da, 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 da. so that is kind of the conversion track. Uh, the, uh, the paganism track again. All these start off as as uh, right here as Christian, but then as this goes down the the track, they convert over. How does that go down the track? Well, they're going to go down the track through via these event cards. Let's pull up some of these event cards here. They're going to go down the track via these event cards, and and actually as they go down the track, there's a, there's a whole deck of really bad cards here in Scotland, really bad cards in in. Uh, Strathclyde and really bad cards in England uh, that um, that they get shuffled into the deck and they're they're like invasions and slave trade and all kinds of stuff. There's some bad stuff that goes in there that are bad for you. So you know you're wanting to try to b b get conversion before it gets all the way down this track because each one of those cards go into the deck and they make your make your life tougher. So this is a typical card here, and so it, there's going to be a card that's in this key, the, in the current card, and then the key. The key basically tells you what area to look on here, because you see this arrow here. This arrow will be in the in the key area, and it will point to something over here, so it points to that red. So you're going to read this event right here. Um, if it was lower, then you'd read some of these other events. Typically, the easier events or better events for you or better circumstances are down below. The, as they go up, they get a little bit tougher for you. Um, so 
the, 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 what happens is this is the current and then it gets moved over here. Then when you draw the next card, that go, that becomes the current and, and this tells you what to read on that card. Some cards might be, uh, you know, saints. And so you take the saints and you shove it under your um, uh, mat and then you save them to use uh, later on the game if your saint uh, goes away. So, so that's really the key thing to the game. It's, it's, there's a little bit of a, of a, uh, of a coin feel to it, you know, where you kind of know what the next card's going to be, or you know what the indicator is going to be, but you really don't know what the card's going to do. And then that's when you flip this over and see there's different arrows on here doing different things, uh, and telling you what to do. You're going to read the event. Um, and then like this one right here, if you had an arrow pointing to this, well, everything is just that one event. There's also some cards that have stuff up top and usually what's up top is not good. Like lose one zeal, remove a church from an area that you are in, if any. So you're automatically going to lose one zeal and then you're going to lose uh, a church in that area. And then you're going to have, then depending on what the where the key card's focusing, you're going to have to do one of these three areas here. This one tends to be on the green, so you're going to do uh, whatever's listed on there. And that on these cards uh, will will add druids back on. They're going to knock zeal down. They're going to they're going to flip people back over to pagan. You know, so you'll work really hard, and all of a sudden it gets flipped back over to a pagan. Uh, and as, as this goes down, the more bad cards go in there. So it, it, that's how, that's the, basically the engine of the game is these cards is what drives the game forward. And that's what you're trying to, that's what you're fighting against. You're fighting against this track, getting down to the game ends. You know, you might actually get some of these gift of the spirit. I didn't get any of the gift of the spirit. There's not a lot of those in here. I went back and looked like, is there any in there? And I, that there are, there are some. So you get these gift of the spirit and these are really nice keepers because these are like add a special power that, that you know, you already have a, a special power, a special ability uh, on your card. Like this, uh, this, uh, Saint here, Brendan plus one to convert druids, uh, may move to any other area in Ireland for one action. So normally when you move again, that's one of your actions here is to move, you move to adjacent area. Well, Brendan can move to any other action, any other area for one action that that's pretty cool um so uh so i think you got all the actions that you got convert move build improve a church that's just, you have to be an existing church and you move it up to the next level give or take a card with another play in the area so th this game really plays better cooperatively in that you can play you know shift cards from each other like card keepers that they have you can trade those with each other uh, you can make a relic, you know, that's to flip a great, you know, one of these graves over to a relic and then that saint can carry along with them. It's like the holy hand grenade of Antioch or Enoch or whatever. You can make a relic. Oh, that we talked about that. You can final effort. Final effort is if you're on this level right here on your thing, you can do a final effort, but then you're going to die. And so it's kind of your last full measure. And then you have to bring in a new, uh, saint. Hopefully you have one. If you don't have a saint, that can be problematic because if you don't have a saint in your keeper, then you become an acolyte, and uh, they're not as good. I mean, as you see here, you don't have as uh, you don't have the four four on the zeal. Your your actions will go down quicker in that regard. And there's also a, a, I think one of the game in things that if you uh, if an acolyte goes uh, gets uh, knocked off, then the game ends. I, I got to read up on the rules. I, I, I haven't got to that point. Uh, I've always tried to have a priest. Sorry, a, a saint handy. It's always good to have a saint in your back pocket. Um, so I haven't ran into that, but I think that's one of the end conditions is if, if an acolyte goes away. But they're not as good, so you definitely want to store up some of these saints. Um, there are, uh, I think, like 12, and you're going to start off with uh, picking your saints, and then what, whoever you pick goes back in the box, and then you put six in these in this deck here. So you're always going to have uh, some saints in here to get, get a hold of uh, during the game. Um, what else is, oh, like if you fail against a druid, then you get one of these dolmens out there. There's like a monument to that druid and that's like a monument to paganism. And so, or like a pagan, uh, stone monument. And so that's always going to be a negative one out there. So that, that, that could be a problem. If you fail to a lot of druids and get a lot of these out here, then that's, that makes that even tougher to do conversion attempts. Again, everything is based on doing a conversion attempt, uh, and that is basically the game. Um, as I said, it is, uh, it's not that hard to figure out. The, the toughest, you know, the, the cards are very unique, uh, how they do the event cards, but it, that, that's not that complicated. That, that plays pretty good. How this track works is, is pretty smooth. Um, your actions and using actions and having zeal as hit points, that's 
not complicated, right? Uh, the complicated part is this kind of conversion track here, remembering who who modifies who and kind of the pecking order that goes down on, on, on how that works, uh, getting down to the people. And, and, and the, the real one is remembering about the druid, you know, that, that the druid kind of blocks stuff until you get rid of it because you, you've got to get rid of that so you can start doing stuff in that area. Uh, that's really the only complicated part of this rule of, about the about the game, and it's not that complicated. Uh, setup's not that bad. I mean, it, it took a while to sticker all these. This is a block game of sorts, and you know, you know how I love stickering. Go back and look at my videos. Uh, and I did okay on these, but um, you have to sticker all these, uh, and it took a little while to go follow the guide to figure out. You know, all right, who do I stick or do I... Because, like, this says here, Christian Pagan, it doesn't say front and back. So, you go, okay, oh, that's front, you know. So, I counted everything and counted all my stickers and checked them twice. And now, this says front and back. Okay, that's easy enough. But then this one, this one has a pairing. So, that tells you on the sticker sheet how to do it. But some of these, you got to do this whole thing of, all right, how do I do that? Any block game, you got to figure out, well, how do I put the stickers? Because the last thing you want to do, at least me, is put the stickers on wrong and they do give you a few spares, but you got to put the stickers on. So there's a little bit in the setup of this initially. Then once you do that, then you have all these blocks. Just keep them in separate bags like I do. And then you can uh, lay them all out. Uh, and, and, and it's you know really not that hard to set this up once uh, once you get everything stickered. So there you have it. That is Banish the Snakes, um, uh, uh, published by uh, GMT Games, which were kind enough to send me this. I want to do a shout out to them for sending this to me. Uh, I'm going to do some more play on this, and I might do some more after action. But this is this is a nice little, um, not little, but a, a decent sized game that has uh, quite a bit of decisions. You're mini it's got a lot of dice rolling. So if you're if you don't like dice rolling, you know, uh, stay away. But uh, but there's a lot of ways to mitigate that dice roll. The whole this whole game is about mitigating dice rolls. It's about you know matching you know getting evangelizing or getting you know other bonuses and, and trying to or, or using the bonuses of of the right uh, uh, the right saint at the right time and trying to get this conversion slider down. Uh, and early in the game, I was able to do really well on, um, you know, zero, you know, it's having automatic successes. So that, you know, I was cranking away, but then some baddies got put back on the board and that are like higher values. And pretty soon you're really struggling on this uh, to, and, and if you get some failures, you're going to get some more of those monuments out there. And then, you know, who knows which, where you're going to be at. So, uh, there's a lot of decisions about how you mitigate it through uh, churches and uh, and the like. So th there, there's there's quite a th there's to me there's there's sufficient decision space in this game that it's not just a you know playing solitaire with cards. I mean, or just rolling dice and saying do I win? You've got to make a lot of decisions on this. As I said, this is the first time I won. I'm pretty proud of myself. No, uh, uh, this is the first time I won, and so and I probably did some stuff wrong. I always do something wrong every time. I go, oh, geez, I forgot about that. Like, I forget about these all the time, you know, that if you fell, uh, uh, fell against a druid, you get one of those bad boys. Um, and when you fail, too, I mean, you, you lose zeal, and so that could be a problem. And there's really no way to get zeal back. Uh, there's, like, no actions or anything like that, so you really got to manage that. Anyway... That's what I have for you today on this Sanctuary Sunday. I thought this was very fitting for Sanctuary Sunday. Uh, maybe not so much for Mother's Day, but, you know, maybe maybe you'll play this with your mother. Anyway, that's what I have for you today. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.